Hi, thanks very much for joining me. My name is Natalie armstrong Morton, and this is Marketing Monday. Today is Monday, May 9th, and I really appreciate you clicked on to join me. I want to talk today about something that, a technique that I use for my own business, and I hope that it's proving valuable for you by the time we finish this conversation, and that is something called calendar blocking or time blocking or task batching. There's a lot of different names. It's essentially uh, the same idea, the same kind of technique. So let's talk about it a little bit and see if I can't help you get better with your time management systems. Uh, Cal Newport, you know, he wrote a book some time ago um, called Deep Work, and I thought it was a really valuable book. And from that is a quote that reads, a 40-hour time block work week. He estimates to produce the same amount of output as a 60-hour work week pursued without structure. And so this conversation is all about structuring your calendar. Now, I, I know that we don't always have control over our calendars as mediators and arbitrators, um, but and I don't always have control over my calendar even um, as a marketer, but we do the best we can. So if you're using, for example, an online calendaring system like uh, Acuity or Calendly, I use Acuity in conjunction with my Google uh, Calendar. Um, so you can create these kinds of processes and programs that will help you best utilize the time that you have at your desk, in your office, with your clients in front of your computer. And, you know, it's the, the whole goal here is that your calendar doesn't control you, but that you control your calendar. It's a big difference. And so how how do you do that? How do you balance, um, you know, the pre-mediation conferences, the actual mediations or arbitrations themselves, answering your email, invoicing, network, writing, speaking, training, you know, taking out the trash, all of these things that have to be done to keep your practice growing and moving forward and and doing good work for your clients. And I think that that might be where this concept of calendar blocking or time blocking comes in. So I want to show you the image of what my calendar used to look like before using this system. And so my old calendar looks like this. So as you can see by the colors, it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's a few minutes here, it's a few minutes there. After some time uh, blocking, calendar blocking and task batching, this is what my calendar looks like. And so it keeps like items together, like tasks together. It makes best use of the in-between times. And I think that that's really important. So the best way that I can help you with this is to go through each one of those words that I've, I've just thrown at you and define them in such a way that you can pick and choose what works best for you and your practice. Um, you know, it's, and you'll, you'll hear the, them frequently used interchangeably, but they're not actually interchangeable. They, they really do mean something different. Um, so let's look. I think that um, prioritizing your tasks, your activities, is a really healthy thing for any business person to do. And for me, it's, it does require that, that, you know, there's some dedication to it to make it really work, to remove the chaos, to remove the confusion, to remove all of those kinds of issues. To sit down, generally for me, Sunday night before I go to bed and I can look at my calendar and I can drag and drop and move things around and prioritize. Nothing then is really a surprise. I'm mentally prepared, I'm emotionally prepared, I've, I've got my calendar prepared so my business is ready to go. And I kind of know what's coming up for that week. And I'm ready for it. And that sense of maybe even the illusion of control over the week's calendar makes things go much more smoothly for me. Now, that doesn't mean that I can't be reactive in the same way that you would need to be reactive if a mediation or an arbitration gets scheduled or canceled or rescheduled, what have you. You still have to be reactive. And so you, you do still have to be able to move and manipulate the things on your calendar. But having, having things prioritized in advance makes that so much easier to do, right? It really, it lets you provide better customer service um, and it's much easier for you as a business person. So let's talk about some of these terms. Um, time blocking, 
um, or calendar blocking. That is sort of the overall view of when you divide your day into blocks or chunks of time, wherein each block is dedicated to accomplishing a very specific task, tasks, activity, or activities, right? And so, for example, um, I, in an average day, I get 383 different emails and messages, and that's a lot. So on my calendar, in the morning when I start my day, I open my email inbox and I go through and I manage those emails that need my immediate attention. I do the same after the lunch hour at 1.30 and then I do the same at the end of my day so that I'm not spending all day, every day, just, you know, mired in this never ending siege of communication. It lets me block out the time. It's marked as busy. It is fairly sacrosanct. And that's the time that I handle all of that, those messages. And so I can sit down, give it my full focus, my full attention and communicate, hopefully really well with the people who are communicating with me. Task batching, task batching, that is where, as opposed to saying I'm going to do uh, three minutes to um, empty the, the the trash bin, I'm going to spend five minutes cleaning the bathroom, I'm going to spend five minutes organizing the conference room snacks and restocking tissues. Those those are really small, maybe two small um, time chunks, but you can lump them all together into one task batch that is just called preparing for a mediation, wherein you go you know, from one room to the next room to the next room, making sure that you've got you know, fresh coffee, you've got fresh snacks, the tissues have been replaced, the bathrooms are clean, the flowers are fresh, the carpets have been vacuumed. So you, you know, to put it into a, a prep time batch as opposed to little teeny tiny bite-sized things, those little teeny tiny bite-sized things on your calendar, they look chaotic, they feel chaotic, and they feel overwhelming and you tend then to just let the whole system, you know, go to the wayside. And I think that if you use time uh, or task batching appropriately and set aside chunks of time for like tasks, you'll be a lot happier with the results. Then there's something called day theme. Day theming the way I use it, and you could do it too, is where, for example, you would hear a mediation, mediations and arbitrations only Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And on Friday, that's the day that you handle invoicing. That's the day that you handle client management. That's your day to write your article, prepare your speech, think about the training that you're going to be delivering. Um, so Friday is kind of your, your flex day. It also means that if a client calls and says, oh, gosh, we've really run up against something or we, you know, we got really close on Monday. Can we wrap this up this week? You've always got that Friday set aside as the day that that lets you be reactive, the day that lets you handle those kinds of oddball um, errands uh, that lets you have the flexibility necessary. If there's nothing to do, that means you also get a three day weekend, right? So that's day theming. And I use Fridays for just that. Fridays are kind of my day. Friday is the day that I work on my content. Friday is the day that I think about my business. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday, I'm thinking about your business. Friday is the day that I think about my business. You could organize your calendar in such a way. Now, am I available to give a training on Friday? You bet. If somebody calls and says they need a consultation or a training or something, yes, I can absolutely use my my Friday to make that happen. But that's what time or rather day theming is. And then there's time boxing. Now, time boxing is something a little bit different and it's not something that I use. You might find it valuable. So let me tell you what time boxing is. And time boxing is where you say, for example, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., I'm going to write um, 2,000 words for the periodical that has requested an article from me. Or between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., I will, in its complete form, create the next speech or the next training or the next whatever it is that you're working on, right? And time boxing works for some people because it sets a finite bracket around the time that you're willing to dedicate to any specific activity or project. So for a lot of us, that's a good thing um, because one of the ways that we regularly get stuck as business people is seeking perfection. When the progress of getting it done 
is for most of us just good enough, right? You don't want progress to stand in the way of, of or rather perfection to stand in the way of progress. You want it to be the other way around. Let's get it off the list. Let's get it done. Let's do a really good job at it. And then let's move on to the next thing. So those are some of the, the different ways that we can use to manage our time and prioritize those color coded boxes. Um, you know, I, I think too, there's a lot of benefits to using this kind of time management system. And one of the things that I think is beneficial is that when you have sort of unorganized bits and pieces of time, the voids in the middle between appointments, between phone calls, then we sometimes we sit down and we say, ah, oh, I've got 20 minutes and I don't know what to do with myself. And it it's it leaves things sort of unclear, sort of fuzzy. And again, that's not the most efficient or effective way to use your time. And if you're using this time blocking time management system and you find yourself with that extra 20 minutes, open your calendar and see what those tasks are and see which of them you can accomplish in the next 20 minutes so that that 20 minutes is used most valuably, most effectively, most efficiently for you. And again, I think it it counteracts the need for us to be perfect. I mean, none of us can be perfect, but some of us get stuck trying to be. And when you set time boundaries, it lets you do the best you can and then move it off the calendar, move on, go to the next thing. And and it doesn't let us it doesn't let us stay mired in that spot. So I think that that's really good because it 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 encourages us then to reach our goals, right? And I think that when you use time management systems like this with the task batching or the time blocking, as opposed to saying, oh, I'd like to uh, meet 100 new prospective clients within the next year, that's a really big task. That's a big ask, right? But if on your calendar, um, you said uh, Friday, let's say that that's your, your theme today. Friday, Friday is the day where you go networking, you meet new people, you meet, pers you meet prospective new clients. Well, faster than you know, you will have met not just 100 new prospective client, clients, but hundreds of them because it's, it's being done in bite-sized, manageable chunks of activity batching. And that's what we're talking about. So I think that it really does... You know, like um, like working out, it's an exercise regime. It is a, an ongoing management system. And I think that that's really where the value comes in. Um, so, you know, there are, you know, some small criticisms that, you know, it doesn't allow us to be reactive. I, I think that it does allow us to be reactive, drag and drop, move them, be flexible with them. Some of the things that you saw on my calendar in red, those are the things I have to attend in person, face to face, put on some lipstick and, and join in the conversation. Those things I can't move. The other things that you saw on my calendar are the things I need to do, the things I'd like to do, uh, and then the client work that has to get done. And some of them have hard deadlines, some of them don't. So I can drag and drop and move things around in my calendar. For me, it adds the most flexibility and control. So these are things for you to think about. Um, there are apps that you can use to do this. I don't think it's necessary to buy an app. Uh, you can use um, your Outlook. You can use your, your Google Calendar. You can use Acuity. You can use Calendly. There are lots of different choices available. But I would encourage you to think about a time management system using calendar blocking, time blocking, task batching, or themed days. If you have any questions about these processes and how to organize them, how to put them together, how to prioritize, be sure that you let me know. I'm happy to answer your questions. And two, if you've got an idea for an upcoming episode of Marketing Monday, be sure to let me know in the comments section and I will put together a Marketing Monday to answer that concern. That's it for me. My name is Natalie Armstrong Moton with Marketing Resolution and this has been Marketing Monday. Thanks very much for watching.